Okay, so uh, we've got a simple supported beam. Span is 30. I've got a set of moving loads here. I want to find the maximum, absolute maximum moment of the structure. So the first thing I want to do is take my resultant, my forces and find a resultant force. So I want to find what is my resultant force. Well, it's going to be 1,200 pounds plus 400 pounds. So that will be 1,600 pounds. Now I want to find where my resultant force will land in here uh, to keep the same moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little drawing here. So I've got my 1,200 pound front load. And then at some distance back, I've got my resultant force. And then at some distance back, I've got my 400 pound force. And I'm going to sum the moments about this front edge. So I'll just say the distance here will be x1. And I know the distance here, it is 8 feet. So I'm going to sum moments right up here in this front part. They're not going to be equal to zero, they're just going to be equal. So what is the moment about the front edge due to the actual forces? So it's going to be 400 times 8. So 400 pounds times 8 feet. That's uh, 3,200 pounds, right? If I sum moments about the same point for my resultant force, I get the resultant force times x1. These two things have to be equal. So I can write an uh, equation. 3,200 pounds is equal to my resultant force, which is 1,600 pounds times x1. So x1 is 2 feet. So I know where my resultant force is relative to the front load. Okay? So case one, I am going to balance the 1,200 pound load and the resultant force about the center line of the beam. So let me draw the beam first. I'll just draw it this way. I'll put in a a center line. So what is the distance between uh, the 1,200 pound force and the resultant force? Well, it's x1. I just saw for it. It's 2 feet. So you cut that in half. So that means about the center line, 1 foot forward and 1 foot back. So what would be 1 foot forward? That would be the 1,200 pound force. 1 foot back would be my resultant force. How many feet back to 400? Well, it's a total of 8 feet. This is 2 feet, so I have 6 feet left. So that's the position, right? And I'm going to want to find the moment right there. That's the first moment that I'm going to look for. So now it's just a set of fixed loads. I know my reactions, AY and BY. So to find the moment here, I'm probably going to cut, cut the structure here. Probably because there's a little less going on, I'm going to work the left side. So I'm going to need to know my reaction AY. What's my reaction AY for this set of loads? Well, you can do it two ways. You can do the real loads, which are 1,200 and 400 pounds, or just the resultant force. Which one's going to be easier? Just the resultant force. So I'm going to sum moments. I'm going to use right-hand rule for my sign convention about point B. Make sure it's in equilibrium to find my reaction at A. So just looking at the reaction or the uh, resultant force, what moment does it create about B? <coughs> Positive. So it has a force of 1,600 pounds. What's the distance to it? 
Well, it's one foot from the center line. What's the center line of the structure to be? 15, so it'd be 14 feet. And then my reaction at A is going to create negative moment, and it has a moment arm of the total length of the beam, which is 30 feet. So what's AY equal to? Seven forty six point seven. Anybody else get that? Yeah? Seven forty six point seven pounds. So now I'll cut my structure at that point. I know my reaction A. It's seven forty six point seven pounds. I know the distance. What's the distance from A to that? Well, from A to the center line is 15. Back away one foot. This is 14. And then I'm looking for the internal moment. So what's the moment? Well, I sum moments at the cut. Uh, with right hand rule this moment is positive the reaction moment is negative it has a value of 746.7 pounds times 14 feet so what's the moment multiply that by 14 10,454 10, and that's going to be pound feet and I'll put a 1 there for that's just be case 1. Okay? So now we need to... Uh, oh, I taped my sheet down. Hang on a second. I've got to flip it. So this is going to be case 2. So again, I'll draw my beam. I'll establish a center line. I know at the left edge, AY, the right edge, BY. Let's go back and look. So I now want to balance the resultant force with the 400 pound. What's the distance between those two? Now you can see it better here. It's six feet. So I split that in half. It'll sort of be three feet about the center line. So three feet to the right will be 400. Three feet to the left will be 1,600. So here we are. There's my 400-pound force. Three feet. Three feet front will be my resultant force of 1,600 pounds. And then what was the distance here? Two feet, right? And that will be all the way up to my 1,200 pounds. Now where am I looking for the moment? Right here. So if I want to cut the structure here and find the internal moment there, I'm going to work the left side or the right side right side. So we're going to want BY for this setup. So now I'm going to sum moments at A and make sure my structure is in equilibrium. So again, just like we did before, you can either use the actual load sequence or the equivalent. So I'm just going to use the equivalent because it's just one force. So about A, I want the moment of my 1600 pound, which is going to create a negative moment. So that'll be 1,600 pounds. What's the distance from A to here? Well, the total to the center line is 15. Back off 3, you get 12 feet. And then the moment about B is positive moment. BY times 30 feet. So what's BY equal to?
640? 640 pounds. So now I'll make a cut at that point. I'm looking at the right hand side. Remember we just found BY 640 pounds. I'm looking for the moment internal there. And what's this distance? Well again we know this is 15 back off 3 this is going to be 12. So if I sum moments at the cut make sure it's in equilibrium with right hand rule what kind of moment is this? Positive or negative? Negative. negative. And about the cut the reaction creates positive moment which will be 640 pounds times 12 feet. So what's the moment? 7680. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. 7680. 7680. 7680. Uh -huh. And that'll be pound feet. So the previous one we got that. So it looks like the maximum moment will now be 10,454 pound feet at this position, which is 14 feet from A. So not only do we get a value that we know is the maximum value, we know exactly where it occurred. It occurs at this point right here, 14 feet from there. So now you could do your design. You can say, okay, now I gotta pick out a beam that at, for this loading system has to have this capacity, at least this capacity. And if this is the worst case scenario, then that's the one that would control the design. Of course, in reality, you have to look at multiple load conditions. Uh, you probably have a little bit more load than 1,600 pounds going across your structure. But the idea would be exactly the same. Questions, Mr. Van Tilburg? Yeah, why are we splitting uh, our loads across the center line? Well, that was that thing we just went through, that magical kind of planting the beans and watching the bean stalk grow. That was our rationale for that. All that work we did told us that the maximum moment will occur the maximum moment for a load will occur under that load when it's balanced with the result in about the center line. Okay. That's what all that derivation showed. You might remember that it came up it said that the distance between the two had to be the same, whatever that distance is. Okay. So you just have to check each one in, in line. And we're we're looking at the moment about for on um, this case number one, the moment about that twelve hundred pound uh, right. load. You're looking at that point because that's the one you're balancing with the result of force. So the other case that we did, since this is a two problem system, is we're now balancing the result and the second load, so we look under that second load for the moment. So that's why we're looking at this point. Okay, so it's if we had a third point. load, we'd balance it and we look under the third load. If we had a fourth load, we'd balance it, look under the fourth load. And then you would when you're done with all the cases, you would always take the one that had the maximum value. And then with it, you get a location. Okay. okay.